so I've read about this place and unfortunately it's not a place that you can visit but I hope this video helps so I do invite you to join me on this journey as we explore this amazing site So what is the significance of this structure? Why is, was it built here? <clears throat> and first of all, where are we? Well, we're in South Africa, in the most northern part, what we call the Limpopo province. And back in the days, it used to be called the Transvaal. Now in 1852, the Transvaal, together with the Orange Free State, was recognized as republics. In 1873, they started mining gold just behind those mountains. We call that Kushka Nature Reserve. So just behind there, they started mining gold. And in 1873, the first mining company, a British mining company by Edward Button, was registered in the Transvaal. February 1880, Captain Louis Campbell, together with 120 troops from the 94th Regiment, they came to Transvaal. They wanted to occupy and, and annex the, the Orange Free State and the Transvaal areas. They were stationed in Mozambique at Dalgoa Bay. So they came all the way up here north. And they built this port in three months. Now this Boer Republic's clearly wanted to be independent and in late 1880 they started to besiege the forts of the British. The first one that they besieged was in Potsdam and that was the start of the first anglo World war. There were three major battles. The most common one we know is Majiba Hill which kind of led to the victory for the Boers against the British. This was clearly not the same group of people that left the Cape Colony in 1836 and this one was only like five months that the war was going on and the British did retaliate 20 years later with the second anglo Boer War from 1900 to 1902. Now this fort was actually only besieged in January of 1881. During December, Captain Louis Campbell, he got called back to Pretoria. So he took 60 men with him and he missioned back to Pretoria while leaving Captain E.S. Brooks in charge with the remaining 60 men. The mining camp company that was here, there was about 30 people that seek refuge that came to the fort and there was also about 50 Hottentots people that they called the Transvaal Mounted Police that stayed here in the back of the, f the fort in these round huts. Um, I counted about 12 of them um, going all the way up and yeah it's connected with a trench going all the way down there back to the fort. So in total there was about 140 souls situated in this area. The inside of the fort um, was used to store ammunition and food during the December and it would have been, um, some parts would have been covered by thatching um, with a white sail, those white sails that we usually see in the pictures, it would have been covered by, by that, the thatching. Now the bridge also dug this trench all the way around the fort in preparation for the siege. And there were three posts outside of the fort that was manned by Arten Tots. The one is at the front, about 25 meters from the fort. 
then there's one to the waist also about 30 meters and then there's one to the east I'm not 100% sure if that was a British one what I can understand from the booze also had posts outside of the fort and that one is about 100 meters away and the design um, is different from the other ones so it's not with 100% certainty that it can be said but there's a possibility In an article I did read that the British did dug a well for water. This is the closest resemblance to anything of that I can find. And I'm not 100% sure if it's true from local stories that I've heard. The British were allowed on Sundays to do washing and collect water from the stream that was just to the front of the... just on that side of the fort. But there were no major battles that happened on this side. The Boers attacked the gold mine as well. And they took iron from this gold mine, melted it down and made cannonballs, which they used to fire at the British with. They also fired at the gold mine. Um, on the chimney you can see marks from the cannon fire. And they also tried to pull it down by means of oxen. But they did not succeed. At night, the natives that were here would smuggle corn into the fort for the British and the police force that was there. But they were advised not to engage in the hostilities between the British and the Boers. But they did and they also assisted in passing messages from here to Pretoria. So there was a village here called Eerstaghout. And that's a word, Afrikaans word, and it translates to first gold. So there were a few Boers settling here, but six years later, in 1886, the old village moved 20 kilometers north to what we call today Polokwane, and that's a city word which means place of safety. Now they took everything with them, they even took the church that they built here, and they moved that. Today, that building can be viewed, and it is the UX Photographic Museum that stands in the center of town. Now messages that the war was over only reached here 10 days later, in early April of 1881. So I think it would be fair to say that probably the last shots of the first Anglo-Boer War were shot on this side. And for it to be in this amazing condition still, without any major battle damages, is really extraordinary. Uh, the other forts um, I'm not sure, I don't think they are standing anymore. The one I know they used to build an ammunition house, um, I think it's the one in Leidenburg, that they built an ammunition house and that is still standing today. But no one like this. It reads on this plate, British Fort Malawastad. This fort, fort was one of seven, seven in the Transvaal, Trans which was manned by British forces during the First War of Independence. Here, 140 soldiers, Hottentots and civilians were besieged by a Boer commando under the command of Baron J. Foster for 105 days. Four British soldiers who fell during the skirmishes were buried nearby. So, the other building that also links in with this one is the gold mine. And this dates back to 1873. It was the site where gold was first mined on an industrial scale in Southern Africa. Um, I mean, this was 10, 13 years before they discovered the gold in the Witwatersrand around in Johannesburg. So really an amazing site to, to visit. And um, please join me, subscribe, and I will let you know when I'm there.